Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed Writing Automated Cucumber Tests. Uh, today we're going to have a look at scenario outline data tables. We will look at what a scenario outline data table is, where and why you would use scenario outline data tables, and how to use a scenario outline data table. So first things first, uh, what is a scenario outline data table? Uh, well, similar to data tables as described in my previous video, where we pass in an array of information as part of a single step. A scenario outline data table is where we run uh, the same scenario for each given row we have in this scenario outline data table. Uh, using scenario outline data table uh, can help us to run the same scenario using multiple types of data or other multiple variations of data. So now that we know a little more about scenario outline data tables, why and in what sort of situations would you use a scenario outline data table? Uh, well, like I said, uh, when scenarios don't change, but only the data changes, uh, th this is a prime example. Uh, let's look at a user flow scenario on our zoo site. Uh, so here, I've got um, various links. And let's just say we just want to write a test where we click on adoption. And all we want to do as part of the test is check that we are on the adoption page. And we want to do the same thing with the about. So check we're on the about page when we click on about and when we click on contact we want to check we're on contact and that's it nothing more complicated than that I want to write a test that does that so if I go back to uh, Eclipse uh, I've already written a test that does exactly that so here we have three different scenarios uh, the first one uh, opens the SUSE site clicks on the adoption link checks that it's on the adoption page and then closes the browser and the same steps are repeated for the about and contact page uh, the step definitions uh, again a step definition has been written for each given step because all the steps although they're similar they're different so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this uh, feature file really quickly just to prove that uh, three web browsers open up one after the other where we run our specified tests so I'm just going to right click run as run feature So looking at our results, we had three scenarios uh, and a total of 12 steps and everything passed. Uh, so that's correct. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, and if we look at our step definitions, we've got um, many step definitions. Some are obviously being used more than once, such as given uh, I am on the zoo site and close the browser. Uh, but the other steps are being used only the once by each of the given steps uh, in the feature file. So this is a prime example where we can use scenario outline data tables and replace some of the information uh, such as click on adoption and check your adoption page for instance uh, now a lot of people might be saying you know I don't even know what data tables are but what's the point using this uh, this scenario outline data table why not just use a parameter uh, it probably achieve the same thing and you can do exactly what it is that you're trying to do at the moment uh, and that's true. I, I can use uh, parameters. I, I can kind of uh, do this if you like. Uh, take this approach, um, which clearly says this is a parameter, uh, this is a parameter. Uh, but data tables, uh, particularly scenario outline data tables, do have their advantages. And, and we'll look into that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just copy this. And I'm going to create a, a scenario. Uh, outline and the way to do this is um, when we say scenario instead of saying scenario we now say a scenario outline what this is saying is what this is uh, doing is, is it's identifying this scenario to be used uh, alongside an examples uh, data table and it's also saying that this scenario uh, can run multiple times based on the amount of information we provide and 
to provide a data table for a, a scenario outline uh, as opposed to data table which we do for the given step for example if we um, did here then we would define the table here for, uh, for instance if it was a data table for scenario outline data tables the way we do it is here we do it uh, off at the bottom of every step or if you like after the last step and the way we do is we give an examples colon and then we give our data here so we have uh, two forms of data that we want to pass we have a, a click on some link and we have a check page title so we have two columns of data if you like so the first column I will name um, uh, link and the second column I will name uh, title and now we c I can pass in the necessary information so the first link I want to click on is the adoption so I say um, adoption and the title that I want to check on the page is also adoption the second is about and the same and the last is um, contact now before I go any forward uh, the, this data will be passed in as a parameter uh, but as you uh, may have noticed already from our previous videos if you want to look at the information we want to click on and we go to view page source the links all have IDs and, and names and hyperlink reference um, attributes and the ones I'm interested in is uh, the IDs so adoption has an adoption underscore link uh, about has an about underscore link and contact has a contact underscore link so I'm going to use that information and that's what I want to pass in as part of this um, scenario outline data table so adoption would be adoption uh, underscore link about would be underscore link uh, underscore link now how do you actually use this information in your scenario well where we uh, identified parameters is in double quotes when you want to use a scenario outline data table you identified it using um, arrow brackets so the way we do it is uh, like so and then inside this arrow brackets you give the name of the column you want to use so here I want to use link and here I want to use title so now what's going to happen is when I run this scenario uh, and keep in mind we haven't done the step definition side of this yet well we will do but when I run this scenario it's going to basically first run this scenario for this row uh, where it's going to substitute the value of link with adoption underscore link and title for adoption once it gets here to the end of the last step it's going to rerun this same scenario but this time incrementing the row count by one uh, so it's going to run the next row uh, this time substituting uh, link for about underscore link and title for about and again when it gets to the end it's gonna then rerun the same scenario again for the next row and so on so let's just quickly um run the pretty format on this okay so this scenario now is doing exactly what these three are doing so I'm just gonna comment these out really quickly in case anyone doesn't know to comment out something in a feature file you just use the hash symbol that will comment out um, any given line you want to comment out uh, but now this scenario is doing exactly the same as this so let me explain the uh, the adv advantage of doing this so when we had parameters uh, this kind of approach you still need to write out multiple scenarios there's no way around it uh, even if we want to pass in parameters and we want to check let's just say four five six different pages you still have to write out a full scenario the advantage of using a data table is you just add in the necessary new data so if I want to use a different one for example um, home underscore link all I do is just say um, or just add in the necessary information that's it that's that's 
quite literally all I have to do. I do not have to rewrite a scenario uh, from scratch uh, and replace the values of the parameters. I just add another row to the table and that automatically, um, from an abstract perspective if you like, implicitly reruns the same scenario substitu substituting the necessary uh, places for the data that I've provided. So I hope that makes sense. Now I'm going to move on to the step definitions and I'm going to implement the steps. So before I do that, um, I know that the given I'm on the zoo site and the close uh, the browser steps are all used uh, in every scenario. Uh, but the others, uh, to be more specific, when I click on contact step for instance, or when I click on the adoption step or when I want to check I'm on the about page uh, they are all unique to a given step so I'm going to get rid of all the step definitions for those uh, so I'm going to keep this uh, this I'm going to get rid of in fact let's li be a little bit more clever about this I don't need this I don't need that I don't need that that or that Right, so let's close this. Okay, so now I only have the two steps the given I'm on the zoo and the closed browser. So now we need to implement the steps for these two, and luckily, on the other end, uh, writing the steps for those is very similar to writing a step as if we were just passing in a parameter. So I'm just going to copy um, these two here. The reason why I copied this is because one is uh, looking to click on a link while the other is looking to check on a page. And I'm just going to remove this and add in the necessary formatting needed to be able to pick up those patterns we're going to pass in. And the way you do it is, again, similar to parameters, it's just a regex pattern. And this is the regex pattern that effectively says um, allow any uh, chronological order of characters or numbers or spaces to be inputted as part of this one method and I'm going to copy the same thing in here again uh, we're passing in some parameter so we need to declare it so string uh, so this was a um, link I'm just gonna say link here uh, and this is a string title and I'm just gonna say title here right and that now should be it. So let me explain. Uh, so, so again, this is very similar to how we would pass in a, a traditional parameter uh, like 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 this, where we identify a parameter using double quotation marks. Um, and nothing's really changed. We do the same thing when we try and capture that information in our method, and again when we try and pass it in. Uh, so on the step definition side, there really is no uh, big big change compared to how we pass in information if it were a parameter or if it were part of a scenario outlined data table. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to right click and run this and see what happens um, and what should happen is the same scenario should now run four times uh, but we've only declared the scenario once but we have declared four different additional rows under the column headings uh, so let's run this and see what happens. So the first browser is opened up. It's gone to adoption and closed. The second, and this is going to go to about. The third, this should go to contact, and it does go in order that we uh, define the information and the last one should just click on itself effectively on the home link and there you go so what's happened well as you can see what it did was when it ran uh, so these are just the comments and by default all comments are printed when we run a feature file so, so just ignore all of this for now but when it ran uh, in, as our console output result it basically said this is the scenario it's trying to run and this is the field where it's trying to replace the value with whatever it is that we provide and then it ran all the examples i.e. all the row data so when it ran the first row here 
it basically replaced this link and this title with adoption underscore link and adoption and the same approach was taken for about contact and home at the bottom notice that even though we've declared one scenario it's actually run four scenarios because there are four sets of data in the data table and in total there are 16 steps i.e. Four, uh, four steps times by four rows which equates to 16 steps and that's how we use scenario outline data tables so I hope through this video you've kind of understood the difference between using a parameter and using a data table uh, and note a difference is that when we use scenario outline data tables we have to define the scenario as a scenario outline uh, this effectively tells Cucumber that this scenario is designed to run multiple times based on the number of rows we provide it in the examples data table which should be available after the very last step in that given scenario and that's it for this video folks uh, if you enjoy my video and find they bring some new knowledge or insight into writing cucumber tests uh, then please subscribe and rate and comment if you have any questions or video suggestions then please leave a comment below uh, many thanks for watching until next time ciao Thank you.